Brexit. Has Britain already left the EU? We are going to leave on the 29th of March 2019. Yeah. On the 2nd of April 2019, Robin Tilbrook of the English Democrats challenged the government claiming that the UK had already left the EU on the 29th of March 2019 at 11pm, as originally promised. The government dismissed the claims as without merit. So who is right? And are we in or are we out? In 1972, when Britain joined the common market, it created the European Communities Act. Unlike the US, the UK does not have a written constitution, so it has to adopt all international law into UK law. In the US, Congress can only supersede international law if there is an inconsistency with the US law, but they can't change the international law which is consistent with the US law. Meanwhile, in the UK, because there is no written constitution, Parliament has to write a matching bill and then pass it into UK law. It's similar, but it means the UK can change international laws which aren't necessarily inconsistent to UK law regardless. That's unlikely to happen, however, because international law is kind of like the house rules of planet Earth. Change the rules or annoy your country's allies by not following the rules and you lose trust which in turn creates enemies that won't help you in a future war or won't make trade deals with you in the future. So, by formality, all international laws are ratified into UK law by legislation. Now, the European Communities Act of 1972 has been amended throughout the years to include all the changes to the EU, including things like the creation of the single market and the expansion of the EU. When David Cameron promised a referendum on the EU, he passed the European Referendum Act. This act did not mean the UK was forced to leave the EU, should we have voted that way, but it did require the Prime Minister to set in stone the referendum date, so he decided on the 23rd of June 2016. As we know, Britain voted to leave the European Union by 52% to 48%. This did not automatically mean the European Communities Act of 1972 was repealed, because the Referendum Act was pre-legislative. So Theresa May tried to use royal prerogative to start the process of triggering Article 50 to leave the European Union herself without a piece of primary legislation that would have required the consent of Parliament. The government argued that the European Communities Act did not restrict the government's ability to conduct foreign affairs. They argued that if Parliament wanted to restrict the government's ability to withdraw from the EU, they would have done so already. But Gina Miller was arguing that because of the European Communities Act, triggering Article 50 itself would make major changes in UK law, and as such, changes could only be made through primary legislation and the consent of Parliament, rather than using the prerogative itself. If EU treaties no longer applied to UK domestic law, then the European Communities Act would become invalid, and so with it, the legislative powers of Parliament would be lost. She argued that it's not the government's choice to remove power from Parliament, but only Parliament itself. Only Parliament can grant rights to the British people, and only Parliament can take them away. So the court ruled in favour of Gina Miller, forcing the government to seek parliamentary approval before triggering Article 50. So the government created the European Union Notification of Withdrawal Bill, which empowered the Prime Minister to tell the European Union the UK wanted to leave the European Union by sending a letter to formally notify the EU Council. This bill was passed unamended, coming into effect on the 16th of March 2017, with Theresa May finally sending that letter notifying our withdrawal from the EU on the 29th of March 2017. This started a two-year time limit under the Article 50 process. 
In 2018, the Brexit Secretary, David Davis, came up with the European Union Withdrawal Act. This was an act which repealed the European Communities Act of 1972, fixed the date for 11pm on the 29th of March 2019 as exit day. It copied 20,000 pieces of EU law into UK law. It created powers to create more laws through secondary legislation that put these laws into place when the time was right. And it required Parliament to approve the final Brexit deal, which later became known as the Withdrawal Agreement. By 2019, the Withdrawal Agreement failed to pass through Parliament on the 15th of January and failed again on the 12th of March. Yvette Cooper put forward a bill which amended the European Union Withdrawal Act, seeking to avoid a no-deal Brexit and requiring the government to consent Parliament on the length of an extension to Article 50. On the 14th of March 2019, Theresa May asked Parliament whether she could ask the EU to extend till the 30th of June. The EU granted until the 12th of April, with until the 22nd of May to ratify the deal, should it be agreed. This was extended again, using the same process following a third rejection of the withdrawal agreement on the 29th of March. So May extended until the 31st of October. In Section 20 of the European Union Withdrawal Act, the Act ensures that a Minister of the Crown can amend the definition of exit day to ensure that the day and time of the Act are the same as the day and time the treaties cease to apply to the UK. EU treaties still did not cease to apply by the 29th of March 2019 at 11pm because May asked for an extension, therefore the exit day in legislation was amended. But Robin Tilbrook was arguing that because it was a piece of secondary legislation that enabled the extension of Article 50, and because no Minister of the Crown amended exit day in the legislation before 11pm on the 29th of March 2019, that meant the original exit day still applied and the UK automatically left the EU. Yvette Cooper's extension bill was debated in the House of Lords on the 4th of April 2019, so therefore after the 29th of March 2019, I did not receive royal assent. The Speaker ruled that Her Majesty's consent was not required, therefore the bill was introduced, suggesting he was advised the bill did not affect the prerogative, i.e. the right to pass bills. Therefore, they argue that if a bill does not affect the prerogative, it is void and does not have the legal authority to enshrine extending Article 50 into law. According to EU law, notification of extension, revocation or invocation of Article 50 may only be done in accordance with the constitutional requirements of a member state. But because the UK does not have a written constitution, our legal relationship with Article 50 is all up for debate. In my opinion, the Tilbrook case will not win for the following reasons. Firstly, the Cooper Bill gave consent for the government to seek an extension and was acted on after the first vote. Secondly, the European Notification of Withdrawal Bill empowered the Prime Minister to seek an invocation of Article 50 in accordance with EU law. EU law allows an extension to be sought before a final exit date, which both before the 29th of March and before the 12th of April, the extension was granted. Section 20 of the European Withdrawal Act of 2018 allows a Minister of the Crown to amend the exit date in accordance with EU treaties, which it has been, albeit after the 29th of March, but still in accordance with EU law given the extension was granted before the 29th of March, and the logistical time limits would not allow UK law to be amended before the international treaty was applied. The international treaty still takes precedence, in my opinion, because the UK agreed to the European Union Communities Act in 1972, and that act can only be repealed once an alternative has been granted by the EU, whether it be no deal or a deal or even revocation of Article 50. 
Parliament has only granted an extension to Article 50 and not an agreed deal with EU. Nor has Parliament not acted at all, so as to mean that the UK would default to a no deal. Instead, Parliament has been agreeing to extend Article 50. The EU has allowed the UK to extend Article 50. And the Gina Miller case only proves that Parliament has supreme authority in the UK, not the courts or the government. And as such, Parliament has not given consent for the repealing of the European Communities Act on 11pm on the 29th of March 2019. Instead, it gave consent to apply to extend that date. Finally, defaulting to a no-deal Brexit by legislative default would mean many other international agreements, such as the Good Friday Agreement, would automatically be broken should the UK have to adopt World Trade Organization rules and meet discrimination guidelines by imposing customs checks at the north-south border. This would affect the peace process and could mean an international loss of trust in the UK. This in itself defends the rights of the government to follow the parliamentary will to seek a solution before a unilaterally agreed final exit date. And so far, this remains in both UK and EU law as the 31st of October. But do you agree with me? Join the debate below and subscribe.